stock market chart review on the weekly chart for the week ending July 29th, 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be looking at the S&P 500 and four other ETFs that make up a high percentage of the S&P 500. Now here is a the Fidelity website and we see portfolio composition of the S&P 500. Let's take a deeper look into that. So here is the top 10 stock holdings of the S&P 500. You can see that the majority of them are tech stocks except for Johnson & Johnson, United Health Group, and Berkshire Hathaway. Everything else is a tech stock. And that goes in accordance with the sector exposure. Information technology has, comprises 26.74% of S&P 500. Then we have uh, healthcare at 15.06, financials at 10.74, consumer discretionary at 10.47. So what I've done is found ETFs that correlate with technology, healthcare, financials, and consumer discretionary. And we'll take a look at those. So here are the four ETFs that we're going to be looking at. XLK is technology ETF. XLV is a healthcare ETF. XLK is a financial ETF. And XLY is a consumer discretionary ETF. By looking at these four, we should have a good idea of what the S&P 500 should do. Now, this is not written in stone. This is really looking into a crystal ball, trying to figure out the future. There's all types of things that can happen from uh, other aspects of life, including politics and geoeconomical things that have in that have impact into this. But we're just going to look at the charts and and see what might happen from week to week, starting today. Let's do it. This is a two-year chart of the S&P 500. Each of these green or red things, which are called candlesticks, represent a week of trading. And we, this was the last week of trading right here. Right, so that was the week of Monday, July 25th, 2022 to July 29th, 2022. And we see that, we can see that the, the uh, S&P 500 opened here, throughout the week traded as low as down to here, traded as high as to right up there, and closed right here. Right? So that was a big, strong push up which obviously had been kind of going down. Now, big, big move up. We see over the last couple years, it's been, or last couple months, two years, it was going up, took a dive down, got close to this 200 day moving average, and it started rallying up. The S&P 500, a, a lot of people look to the S&P 500 is is a, a broad indication of what the overall stock market's doing. Generally speaking, whatever the S&P 500 does, is made up of 500 different stocks, whatever that does, it has a lot of weight on the other stocks. You know, for example, a rising tide lifts all boats, a rising tide lowers all boats. So generally, whatever the stock it is you're looking at, the whole stock market can have some effect on it. Now there's some nuances into that, but we're not gonna get into that right now. What we're gonna, gonna get into right now is we'll look at XLK, the uh, technology ETF that makes up around 25% of S&P 500. Let's take a look at that and see what that looks like. Very similar, right? Really similar candle. 
it almost looks similar in what's been happening for happening for the last two years an undifferentiating eye might think it looks very very similar which it does but I mean there's little nuances in the difference pretty similar now let's take a look at the healthcare ETF now this one we can see has some differences although what we do see that's similar is it's been an upward traje trajectory over the last two years started getting choppy here drop down sprung really high right really high right here but this week one thing I want you to take note of is right here this candle right our last week it opened here it didn't trade much lower you might be able to see just that little bit of a candle tail right just that little bit but look at it traded all the way up here got a little bit below below 134 and it came all the way back here that's a little sign of bullish a bearishness where on these other two really bullish right because our candles our tails down here so on the on the healthcare sector a little bit just a tad bit bullish let's look at the financials financials look at that um at least this week right here looking boom I don't know how well that looks to you let's try to zoom in there a different way hopefully that looks better for you there we go financials not as big of a body as the semi uh, the technology fund but look at that long wick on the end that's very very bullish there right little tiny wick up there kind of similar last two years have been going up quite a bit of a pullback look at this even pulled back to touch the 200 day moving average here but dropped all the way down came up now because this candles red what that is telling us versus this green one is that it opened here at this high point and it closed here. However, look at this long tail, right? That is a sign of bullishness because it traded all the way down here, but ended up closing close to where it opened. And sure enough, the following week and this last week, we saw some bullish movement. So far, out of these three that we're, we looked at, you know, things are looking like the S&P 500 is still going to move up. Let's take a look at that consumer discretionary. Kind of similar look, right? You got for the last about two years going up, pulls back. Wow, look at this. Drop below the 200-day moving average. Boom, look at this humongous candle right there for last week. Again, we see three weeks ago, we got this. Even though this candle closed lower than it opened, we have this long tail here and it closed at the top of the of the trading range, which which is a, a bullish indication. And then we see the next two following weeks, just like in the financials, that it shot up. So by and, and in here for this week, we see it traded all the way down here. But look at that closed way up here, opened here, traded as low as down to here, but closed all the way up there, pushed all the way up there. So when we quickly go through each of these, which I think are, it would appear that the S&P 500 is probably going to be moving up to touch this 50-day moving average. Is it going to be this week? Who knows? But things look to be moving up. Now, what might give us some idea if things might be moving down or moving sideways? Well, let's say we have four different stocks here that are composing a large majority of the S&P 500. So if these, if um, excuse me, these ETFs, which are filled with a variety of stocks, right? So if, um, let's say if two of these ETFs were moving down and two of these ETFs were moving up, that would give us an indication that S&P 500 is probably going to have more of a sideways momentum. When we see all four of these ETFs in alignment, either moving up or down or even sideways, then that should give us an idea of what the S&P 500 is going to do. So ladies and gentlemen, play with that on your own. And next Sunday, there'll be another video. We'll find out what happened in the week coming up for trading week of August 1st, 2022 through August 5th, 2022. 
And we'll see, is the S&P, how close is the S&P 500 going to get to this 50-day moving average? Or is it going to go sideways? Or is it going to take, uh, you know, a 180 and move back down here towards the 200-day moving average? You guys have a fantastic night. Check out the description in this video for uh, a link to, at the moment, three different downloads. Check them out. See if you like them. Subscribe to the channel. Good day.